please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance, followed by a moment of silence. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Coming up today on FST News, find out what clubs are meeting after school. Also, find out where and when ASVAP score in interpretation excuse me, sessions are going to be held. All this and more today on FST News, your eyes and ears around the hill. Good morning. Today is Wednesday, January 16th. I'm Reed Peterson. Thanks for tuning in today, Falcons. It's time to start looking into the future of technology in 2019 with TechWatch. Good morning, guys. Good morning, Reed, and hello, and welcome back to TechWatch with your Nino Top Tech News of the Week. I'm Kaylee Goodwin. And I'm Logan Winter. CES 2019 brought a lot of new technologies this year, including cars of the future to new fun little robots. There were ones with heads and no bodies, even missing limbs. Some of the amazing robots were Samsung robots that could help purify the air around you, monitor your health, or help with retail services for businesses. There was also a fun four-fist bot by Omron that helped teach people how to play ping pong, which could possibly teach even more sports in the future. Automakers and some developers were more interested in the new auto nominous, excuse me, cars and even motorcycles. Hyundai and Bell Aviation gave us a look at uh, elevator concepts, has an electric rescue vehicle with legs and wheels that can help it go over any terrain. And a vision of flying cars were also showed from Bell's Nexus that gave us a look into the future. For now, that's all the top tech news we have for you this week. Find out more top tech news next week on TechWatch. Key Club is a great club to join to learn how to be a leader. If you're interested in joining, they have a meeting in room 254 from 1.30 to 3. Also, if you took the ASVABs in November, score interpretation sessions, excuse me, will be held tomorrow in the library. Sessions are periods one through four and including period six. And if you need to attend, and you need to attend, excuse me, one session. If you have any questions, you can go talk to Stephen Campbell in the counseling office. Now on over to sports. Good morning, guys. What's up, Falcons? I'm Evan Calverly. And I'm Connor Gagnon. <coughs> and I'm Connor Gagnon. On to the courts, varsity boys basketball had a Trinity prep tournament today here at the Hill starting at 6.30. And in the field, the flag football team takes on our rival, the Basic Wolves, here at the Hill. And this Friday, they take on the Green Valley Gators here at the Hill as well. B team plays at 6, JV plays at 3.30, and varsity plays at 4.30. Getting ready to knock over some pins, the bowling team has a match today against Durango at Sunset Station starting at 3.00. Not many students around the school knows what happens in the athletics office. Our current athletic director has decided that she will be stepping down at the end of the year. I got to talk to former athletic director Dean Juanez about why she decided to step down from the position and if she is going to continue to teach. Um, I've been doing it for 10 years and um, I've enjoyed every step of it, but I think that it's time for me to step down and we're, I know eventually we're going to need somebody else in this position. And I thought that it would be a good time now since I'm probably getting ready to retire pretty soon. So I know for sure I've got one more year. I'm going to do one more year here and teach just PE. I don't. Um, Coach Iglitz is a smart guy. He's been around athletics all his life. You know, the only changes I could see is if he comes in and sees how to do something better than we're already doing and helps us out that way. Although she might be retiring soon, she will be missed as the athletic director. Russell Quaring, the assistant principal over athletics and facilities, has a say in this change. I asked him if he thinks he, the change will affect anything. I don't. Um, Coach Iglitz is a smart guy. He's been around athletics all his life. You know, the only changes I could see is if he comes in and sees how to do something better than we're already doing and helps us out that way. The 
this change could improve the way things are being run and bring a fresh face into the program. Matthew Iglitz is taking over the athletic director position. I talked to him about why he chose to take on this position and what his plans are. Uh, the position opened recently and uh, Ms. Nuanis has decided that she is going to retire in the near future. So the position was open and it's something that I have thought about in the past. Um, I've been teaching at Foothill since 2005. I've been coaching here since 2004. So when the position opened, it was just something that I thought uh, might be a new opportunity and, and something that I'd like to, to pursue. Uh, regarding any changes, right now I'm actually just trying to uh, follow Ms. Nuanas and see how she does the job because I'm just learning a lot about what the job itself entails. So I don't anticipate making any new changes in particular. What I'd like to do over the course of time as I start to become more and more familiar with it in the next couple months, uh, I'd like to sit down with a lot of the coaches that we have on campus and just pick their brain and, and talk to them about what they think makes Foothill successful, how they run their programs so that I can become a little more familiar with some of the coaches that I might not necessarily know a whole lot about so far. Having a new athletic director can bring many new ideas and improve the position at the school. That's all the sports for today, Falcons. Reed, back to you. Thanks, guys. That's all the news going around the hill today, Falcons. Make sure to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at FSC News. And from all of us here at FSC News, have a wonderful Wednesday, Falcons.